Okay, well here we are, here we are. Welcome. We have some exciting information in store for today. So let me get you guys pulled up here so um, we can see your comments. Um, I am Lisa. I'm Gary. And we are going to talk about uh, interest rates and mortgage loans and getting a loan and things like that today. Um, so let's get started. most often and then it pushes to the top of the list and right now the question of today is interest rates so that's where we're getting the interest rate bonus or bubble coming I don't know if it's, it's not a bubble I don't think they've been low and been low going lower for a long time so interest rates is why we're here interest rates is the question of the day and why don't we start off with the rates? What are the rates? We okay. got a rate sheet as of yesterday, January 8th, 2021. And go over them real quickly. The uh, interest rates are just incredible. I mean, these are conventional um, purchase rates. So that's what I've got in my hand here. But a 30 year conventional interest rate as of yesterday um, is 2.75. I mean, under 3%. It's crazy. And we have heard of some of our clients getting actually even lower than that. Um, lower than that on a refi, which is unusual because usually purchase rates are lower than a refi rates. Um, but it is, you know, the wild, wild west in the 2% on refis. So the conventional 2.75 and then the FHA 30 year fixed 2.5%. The rate is lower. And then there is a VA... Um, wait, on, wait a minute, wait a minute, 2.5% on yep. a 30 year fixed? Oh, but FHA. The AP, yeah, but the APR. It's a little higher. It's a, it's a little bit over three. But the rate, we're talking about rates. Oh, okay. So the 30 year fixed VA rate is 2.375. I mean, this is just crazy rates. Um, when we're talking about that, another question is, you know, about the conforming loan limits. We get some questions about that. So we'll talk about that. They change the conforming loan li uh, limits every year. Uh, so now the national uh, number for a conforming loan, this is the loan amount, not the purchase amount, is 548250 because they can never quite seem to get it on a round num number. Um, and then in Ventura County here, our limit is a little higher in more expensive areas. The loan limit that's, that's deemed conforming is a little higher. And here it's 7 uh, 39450 is the Ventura County loan uh, conforming loan limit. Well, it's based on a calculation, so that's how come it's just like, hey, we'll round it up, we'll round it down. It's law or what it has to be. So, yes, and the conforming loan limit versus the non conforming loan limit, and then we have high balance, right? Mm -hmm. And the high balance is, well, let's just take the state of Arizona. They have no high balance, right? Right, just because it's not it's not as expensive of a place. Um, so some of the other places in the all over the country that are less expensive, um, that that conforming loan limit can move um, based on where you are. So some places don't have it higher than the, the national standard is the five forty eight two fifty. Correct. And Ventura County, LA County, LA County it's, it's more. It's a little over eight hundred thousand, which is as high as it's, I've ever seen it be. It's just crazy. In Santa Barbara County, because they deemed the whole county was in the 600s last time I looked. So it's actually lower than ours here in Ventura County. So. Yeah, well, you have a lot of you big places like Santa Maria, California, which is in Santa Barbara County. A lot lower house than if you're buying in Santa Barbara, Montecito, Goleta. Right. So that's how come it's, right. it's lower than Ventura. Of course, Ventura County, beautiful county. We've got Westlake Village, Thousand Oaks, Simi Valley. Uh, of course, Camarillo, Oxnard, Ventura. And Ojai. And Ojai, yes, yes. Yes, of course, Ventura being the county seat. So let's talk about how to take advantage of these amazing rates that are out there right now. If you are looking to refinance um, and you have property that you need to refinance, give us a call. We have amazing le uh, lenders that we work with, uh, our preferred lenders, depending on your needs. So give us a call. We're happy to get you with someone really professional, and we highly encourage you. 
um, to call us to use a professional mortgage broker and not some random person you online. <laughs> right. Well, and, and let's, let me back up just a second. The reason this is so important right now, it's a, the competitive market that we're in. So if a seller is getting multiple offers and multiple means three or more, then we're looking at competition. So how do you get in front of the competition if you're going to, let's say, do an FHA, which is three and a half percent down, or conventional five percent down? Um, it's very simply said, terms is what's going to put you in front of that, but if you don't have a pre-approval letter, then you're really not in the game at all. I mean, the, the sellers won't even look at your offer, so it's very important. This is the first step in buying real estate. I don't care if you're buying a $5 million house or a $500,000 house. Both of, those, we, both of those are in the price range in Ventura County for sure. But you've got to have bank approval. It's just they won't look at it. It's just you're just shoved off to the side. You're not even a consideration. So let's talk about that for a sec for a second, because um, people I think are confused about what pre-qualification versus pre-approval, what those terms mean. They are not the same. So a pre-qualification letter that you can get from your le uh, lender means that you have told your lender. You know, I make X amount of dollars and I have this much debt or payments that you've told them. And then they may or may not have run a credit check, but it's not a verified amount. So that is a pre-qualification. The next step up from that is a pre-approval, which means the lender has seen your documents, your tax returns, your W-2s, um, and they've done a credit check. So they have verified that the numbers that you have are what they are. Um, they're... Um, they have just checked them, made sure that it's, it is what, what it is, and looked at your tax returns. So that's a pre-approval. Um, so that's one step higher. And then the next step higher is called a commitment letter, which means that those numbers that are verified have been put through underwriting, and an underwriter has looked at it all, checked it all, and they have committed that they will loan you X amount of dollars, of course, the caveat there, based on the appraisal of the property. But you are the third step closer to being um, ready to go. Well, and the commitment letter is the best. The most lenders right now have suspended their commitment letters process just based on the fact that the United States of America is set up for about $2 trillion a year in loans. And right now we're experiencing about $4 trillion a year in loans. So we're double the capacity of what we're normal set up to do. So the commitment letter is, hey, they've run you through underwriting and everything, they just don't have the time these days to do that. So a pre-qualification means you called in and said, hey, you know, I make $60,000 a year, and the lender runs the numbers and says, okay, here's what you can afford. Now, the pre-approval means, hey, it makes 60,000 a year, they've seen your uh, paycheck stubs. They've seen your taxes, they've seen your banking information, they've seen all the information that they're going to want, and they're going to want a lot. And it runs through, and then you get the pre-approvals. That, and that, a credit report, and of course they'll run your credit. Right. This is, so we're not lenders, but I mean, this is something that we deal with every single day. When somebody, you know, says, hey, I was driving by this property and I've got to have it, which is exciting, especially for the buyer. And then it says, well, you know, you need to get at least pre-approved. And they call the lender and they say, well, you know, I'm, you're several days out before we can get you a letter right. that says you're pre-approved. And by that time, the property could be sold. Well, in this market, that's the case. So just need to get ahead of that curve. I want to shout out, hey, Jason, how are you? Thanks for watching. And Lori and Eric, we love you guys when you watch us live. It's awesome. So if you have any questions about loans or lending um, or interest rates, that's what we're talking about today. Uh, is loans and lendings and interest rates. Um, so that's where we are. So yeah, yeah, because it's the first step to buying real estate. That's and right. And that's where we come in. That's right. So we'd refer you to an excellent lender, no problem. We've got referrals for basically every part of the industry. However, this is the first referral you're going to need from us. Yeah. Um, so that's what Gary just touched on that real quick. But if you're wondering why your refinance or your purchase or your escrow didn't necessarily close on time in 2020, it's because the normal uh, mortgage volume is run about $2 trillion a year, total vo uh, volume in the nation. They're saying tw 2020 is going to close at 
trillion dollars in mortgage activity in 2020. I mean, that's like a number you can't even fathom. Um, and so that is why things have been backed up and things they've been running as fast as they can. Um, any underwriter that you know is fully employable right now by anywhere they want to work. It's just crazy. And then the, um, ex the uh, prediction for 2021 is mortgage volume at 2.7 trillion is the estimate right now. So it's still a huge number, but 2020 was just a crazy volume year. Um, I think because people are moving because their needs have changed based on the, the changing in, in, of the world. Um, they either need a bigger house, smaller house, need to move for their job, need to move for their family. So there's been some changing of people needing to move for that. And then also just the refinancing. They realize they're going to be in their house. It's now their home, their office, their school. Um, and they're going to be there for longer than that maybe they anticipated. So they're refinancing. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of activity in that market, mm -hmm. which is if you're an underwriter, like Lisa said, you're not looking for work right now. In fact, they're paying bonuses for you to work on weekends and holidays. And it's a very lucrative position. But the train's moving so fast, they really don't have time to bring on new people and train them, even though that's what they're doing. So that is prone for more mistakes. Anytime you have new people doing something that they haven't done before, we all make mistakes. Right. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about, we just talked to one of our lenders called to see what was actually happening right now live in the market th this week. And the number one thing that she said was happening in the market, in the, our market, is appraisals are coming in low. So that is one of the hurdles that we're overcoming right now. So the market's moving so fast and properties are, the prices are moving up faster than the closed comps can keep up with it. It's closed comparables. Um, that it's some of the appraisals are coming in low because the appraiser, when they, when they do the appraisal on your house, which is what they, the value of what they think it's worth, independent third party value of the property um, is what an appraisal is, that um, it, I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> well, they're coming in low. They're coming in low. <laughs> and people, people are like, oh my gosh, the appraisal come in low. Let's say you're buying a million dollar house and the appraisal comes in at 975000 That would be an example of a low appraisal. So, doesn't mean you can't buy the house, does it? You can still go forward and buy the house. Absolutely. So, one of three things is going to happen. That's right. One is your buyers, you just have to pay the money, pay the $25,000 in cash. To come up to your contract value because you wrote an offer for a million, appraisal came in 975. So it's always your prerogative to pay the difference because um, to you in this market, you just want to get a home, and so it may be worth it to you to pay the difference. Plus, the market's climbing right now; prices are going up. So maybe you know you don't mind pay, uh, paying that because next year it's going to be worth more than a million. So you're fine with that. Um, another way. Yes, well, <clears throat> let me just start right there. You, you know, yes, you can always pay the difference, and you may be fine paying the difference for the house you want, right? Yeah. The seller, let's go to number two right now, they can discount the house to 975 and take a praise price for it. But what's usually happening in this hot market is they're just saying, well, you were buyer A, we chose you first, that you want the house, you love the home, you can't wait to move in, but we're going to take buyer B and we're going to roll the dice with another appraisal. Because you can have three appraisers go look at a property and based on our experience, you're going to come back with three different prices. So right. they'll say, hey, maybe this person is more willing to pay the 25000 Maybe they have the money and the, the buyer A doesn't have the money. So... That could happen too. Right. Um, so the, the third way. Which is. The negotiation. Yeah, the negotiation. Back to negotiation. Yeah, so you know, <laughs> back to the drawing board. That's right. And that's the way it usually right. goes. Okay. Yes. Yes. The seller gives a, a, a little bit, the buyer brings a little bit, and you end up somewhere in the, in the middle. That's, that's how it usually works. Usually the sellers, you know. They're not playing hardball, they're just disappointed that the appraisal didn't come in. And the reason the appraisal didn't come in is that the prices have been increasing so quickly right. that the appraisers only use sold comps. That's a property that has sold and closed and it becomes public record. They can't use active properties on the market for an appraisal. Right. So once it's going up, you know, the property that closed last month 
is lower than the property that you're trying to buy this month. Right. So that's a reoccurring theme, and, and that's why this is coming up. And I'm going to answer Jason's question here, because that's just a function of economics 101, supply okay. and demand. What is the so question? We went into, now he said, I was saying appraisers are coming in low because market is moving so fast that not enough is closed, not enough closed comps. Right, and we went into 2019 with light inventory, which continued into 2020, and then COVID hit, so our inventory has been, you know, anyone you know that needs to sell a property, now's the time, because it's just crazy out there, because supply and demand, there's more buyers in the market than there are homes for sale, so that's what's driving the prices up. But the, the, the part we're talking about right now is closed comps, so there just aren't a lot. There aren't a lot of closed comps, because there aren't a lot of properties um, that have been trading, and then that gives the, the tightness to what goes on the appraisals. It's just the number of homes sold and the prices they sold for. That's correct. So the third way is it's negotiations. And if the seller were to take buyer B instead of your offer as buyer A, then the process starts all over again. So you're probably looking at you know home inspections and a new appraisal and it pushes it out. Is everybody so backed up, like Lisa just said, from you know, two trillion to four trillion. Oh my gosh, that trillion, that just kind of rolls off the tongue, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that, that it's going to take time. Nobody's standing out there ready to go. And if you're competing with cash buyers, and there's cash buyers in the market, there's no question about it, then it's terms. And we will know the terms to get the deal. So if I'm a seller, and I've got my property listed at a million dollars, and I have a cash buyer come at a million dollars, and then I have somebody that wants to finance that's coming in higher, let's say a million fifty, then does the seller really care if it's all cash or if it's financed? Probably not, because when the property closes, the seller's going to get fifty thousand additional dollars than what the cash buyer was going to pay. So there's always an advantage in every transaction. It just takes experience and knowledge to exploit that advantage. Right, and sometimes it's not all always about price. Sometimes terms are more important to a seller, that they need to move either more quickly or they need to move further out. They want to be in the property for 90 days or you know, they have some needs that they need to address or you're coming like to year end and you don't want to close until you know, the next year for tax reasons or whatever. So sometimes it's not always about just the bottom line dollar. It's about the negotiation of you know, what the seller's needs are too. Oh yeah, because they can, I mean the needs of the seller you know, if the buyer puts the seller first, they're going to be in a lot better position than if they say, no, no, we're not doing that, that's not a possibility, that isn't going to happen, instead of, oh, well, you need the outbuilding to store your furniture in for 90 days until you can get it relocated to wherever you're going, mm -hmm. and they're okay with that, the buyer's okay with that, that is, goes a long way with the seller, but that's one example of, of there's probably 999,000 more examples on where that could work right. for the buyer. So I want to shout out to our watchers today, Christine and Julia and Mo. Welcome, you guys. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, we're talking about interest rates today. Um, throw them out there because interest rates are just crazy low. It's just some of the things we've seen go across our desk is just in incredible. So it is a great time. If you're thinking about refinancing, you know, we always recommend you probably want to try and get a full point. Um, in difference from what you have to what you are going to get because um, there are some fees involved with refinancing but if you have any questions about refinancing call us if you need a referral to a lender we're happy to talk about your situation um, oh, yeah. yeah we've got the referrals so whatever you're looking for in real estate we've got the referrals let's say you're buying a property in North Carolina We've got the referrals. The reason I bring North Carolina up is that's what we did this week. So uh, we got a client that's looking for an agent there, and we have an amazing network um, between my uh, professional de uh, designations and between our Berkshire Hathaway. We have, of course, a worldwide network of professional agents. Whatever you're looking for to buy or sell or move or relocate, whatever you need. Plus, we've been running into these people in the conventions and in the the promotions and in the luxury division conventions and all the places. So these aren't people that we're just 
like go to Google and find out who they are. We know these people. Mm -hmm. So we just pick up the phone and call them, and literally, we know everybody, not everybody, we know people in every state yes. that can help you out. And then the location. So it's all about the person. It's the right person makes the difference. That's right. So if you know anyone, of course, thinking about buying or selling, just wants to talk about real estate, you want to maybe buy some investment property this year, there's some talk about inflation, and the best way to hedge inflation is with real estate. So we can talk about that, um, whatever other needs are. Yeah, but there's a lot of needs out there, and we're here to fill the gap. Yes, so we coming to you live. We are going to have a big show Wednesday at 3 o'clock live because we are going to be talking about all the 2020 numbers. They will be coming out on Monday. Um, we should have access to the year-end numbers for real estate, so I will chop them, dice them, and we'll be coming to you Wednesday, 3 o'clock live, with all of the information from the crazy year that 2020 was for everyone, including your real estate investments. <laughs> yeah, maybe you could drop them in your Cuisinart. And yeah, then and spin, then, them yeah spin them up. Yeah, spin them Let's see what comes out the other end. So we thank you guys for watching. We love coming live. We love your referrals. Um, so you know, visit us at GaryandLisa.com. And we are always available to talk about real estate. That's absolutely right. So the tagline is GaryandLisa.com. Your real estate edge. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. Oh, we have another question. Want well, to answer the question here? Me too. Hey, Kelsey, you're on here. Sorry, Gary just got up, but happy birthday to you, Kelsey. I know it's your birthday today. Thanks for watching. And Jason has a question here. He just refied, and he wants to foresee rates going down to 1.625, a whole point lower. I can't imagine rates going under 2%, Jason, but I couldn't imagine rates um, at 2%. Even, you know, a year ago when people started talking about rates getting to 2%. But we're in the twos now, but I can't imagine if they go down to, to 1.6. So um, that would be really amazing. But it sounds like you got a really great refi. 2.625 is really, you know, where they're bouncing on the bottom right, right now. So I think you've got an awesome, awesome deal there, Jason. So congratulations. So I just want to get all our questions answered. Thanks for watching. We'll see you Wednesday, 3 o'clock. And we appreciate you guys. See you soon.